Hi there, welcome to another episode of Get Gardening. In today's episode, I wanna to talk to you about growing amaryllis. Now, if you've ever been given amaryllis as a gift over the holidays, or if you've ever seen them in stores and you wanna purchase them, I wanna tell you they're really easy to grow and I wanna share with you all the different steps that I do to make sure that I have healthy amaryllis blooming. I have one that's blooming right here for you to see. I think it's really nice over the winter months to have something so substantial blooming in the house. Here in Chicago, our winters can really be long and depressing and it's really nice to grow something that's gonna be blooming and add some kind of flowers to your life over the winter. Now, if you wanted to purchase one from the store, I would have some tips for you. I tend to think that you would wanna buy a bulb that comes in a little case like this where you can see the bulb. A lot of times I see them in those boxes. You wanna make sure you buy a nice, big bulb like this. You want to be able to test it. You want to be able to feel to make sure that it's really firm and not mushy so that way you know it's not rotting. I have purchased them from those boxes before but I always open them up and make sure I test the bulbs to make sure. But the bigger the bulb the better it's going to be. It's going to have more bloom spikes. Now when you get your plant and it's getting ready to bloom you want to really withhold the water. Um, there's really not a lot of leaves on the plant here and that's where plants tend to lose a lot of the water. So if you're watering it and there's nowhere for that water to go, it would rot that bulb. So keep it on the dry side until it produces leaves and then you can water it every once in a while. When they're done blooming, I go ahead and I cut off the faded blooms so that way they don't produce seeds. And then when the full stalk is done, I cut it down to the base. As the plant starts to develop leaves, then you can start watering it. And I like to keep them in a nice sunny location. When it's warm enough and all the frosts have, have no possibility of being outside, you want to go ahead and put your amaryllis outside for the summer. They want to be somewhere really warm, sunny, and I just let them be out there and leave them to their own devices. Whatever um, water comes, sun comes, it gets what nature provides and I don't do anything else. After they've been outside for a while, you want to start to introduce them back into dormancy. So these bulbs originate from South Africa and they're used to having about three to four months of a period of really cool darkness where there's really little to no water at all. So what I do, I have some bulbs here that are going into dormancy that I wanted to show you what happens. I stopped watering these around October 1st and you can see the foliage is starting to go really limp and die away. I have these in my basement right now where it's just cool, above freezing. It's a good place to store them for about three months. So I stopped watering them on October 1st and around mid-January I would start to ease them out of dormancy. Now if you wanted to have your ball blooming for the holiday season, you want to start that period of dormancy around mid-August and pull them out at the beginning of December. So it takes them a couple weeks before they bloom. After the leaves start to fade back, they're going to start looking like this, where it looks like there's no foliage up on the top. And then you can slowly start to introduce these to warmer temperatures. I just kind of introduce them up a couple stairs from my basement as I'm going. Now the bulbs, they'll tell you when they're ready to go. As you can see, I have one here that's getting ready to have a flower spike. This one here is getting ready to have some leaves. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna plant these today. And when you're planting them, you wanna make sure that the potting soil that you use is really well draining. So I add perlite. You can find that at any nursery that's gonna add some well draining material to here. So you make sure it's not getting waterlogged. Another thing, if you buy them and you notice that they're buried up to here, you want to repot them. I think that they should be buried around shoulder length, which is right about here. That way most of the bulb is out of the soil. So if you want to come over here, I'll show you how I'm going to plant this one. I've got this pot full of soil and I really wanted to put a couple bulbs in here at once to have lots of different flowers blooming over the season. So I have the soil in here. I'm just going to make a little impression and I'm going to plant it where it's about halfway in. I'm going to firm it in with some soil. And I just keep this very dry, a little bit of moisture, but you really don't water them until you notice that those leaves start to go blooming. So here's another one. Um, the other thing that I really do is if you buy the bulbs and they're like this, I make sure that I pull off any of the really dry roots. You'll be able to tell the ones that are really firm, they're not going to come off. 
The ones that are really dry, they'll come off really easily. I pull them off to make sure that they don't start rotting and then that would cause the bulb to rot. So again, I would plant it about halfway at the shoulder level. This one has some roots, so I'm gonna dig a little bit further down. And I plant it so most of the bulb is above the soil level. Now as it's blooming, sometimes the bulb might send up multiple flower spikes. This one only had one, but it was so heavy that I came home from work one day and it had fallen completely out of the pot. So you might have to stake them. I just use some old bread tie material and um, that's how I tie it up. So hopefully I have encouraged you to try growing some amaryllis. And if you were fortunate enough to live somewhere where it's nice and warm outside, I hope you like and subscribe and get out there and get gardening.